Um, but yeah, my name's Chloe. I'm the founder of the B Plan and um, help set up the customer support group that we are all in, hopefully, on, on Facebook, Be The Best You. We are currently on day one of our 10-day reset and renew for 22, our cleanse program. So this is perfectly timed because now you're going to have your five meals taking you right through to the weekend so that you can have for lunch or for dinner. So it's really, really good timing. Um, if, you, if you don't know much about the, the reset program, by all means, uh, drop us a message. We can send you some information. If you're not in our Facebook group, please come in. It's an amazing community. There's nearly 600 of us. And we just love, you know, trying to inspire healthy living and, and looking after ourselves. And part of that is running these events. So we do lots of different events. Wednesday night, we've got an amazing webinar for 30 minutes talking all about whole food supplementation, which is what we're all about and, and how we um, support our health and our cells. Um, but, you know, fruit and veg really is the key to um, a healthier life. It's the elixir. So um, this is how salad in a jar falls into it, which I've been running now for a good few years. Um, and yeah, we'll make a start. So hopefully you've all had the prep sheet and you've got all your colours and all your all your veggies propped, if, uh, prepped and chopped. If they're not prepped and chopped, propped, as I called it, um, you can just carry on. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the B plan and what we represent. We essentially are a group of like-minded people who love health and nutrition. We all take and love and recommend uh, fruit and veg in a capsule. <laughs> so these are them. This is what we do. This is uh, 10 fruits in here, 10 berries, 10 veggies. And uh, we've taken all the water, the sugar out. You're left with all of the amazing soluble fiber, antioxidants, um, which help fight damaged cells. And these massively reduce inflammation and support our immune system. And, and we all take them, we love them. They're part of our cleanse program as well. And the reason why fruits and vegetables and why salad in a jar is simply because we need to eat a lot more of it. None of us do. We need about 10 plus portions a day in our diet to now avoid the sort of disease processes that are happening in the 21st century. And at the same time, we need to also be eating as organic and raw as we can. And of course, the beauty of salad in a jar is that, you know, we're not even cooking the goodness out. We've got a nice raw whole food lunch or dinner. And for me, the, the magic when it comes to health and fruits and vegetables is variety. And hopefully in front of you, you're seeing a rainbow of colour in your bowls and all your prep stuff, because it's the variety that actually lowers the inflammation in our bodies. And we all have inflammation. It's what causes disease, but we don't know it's there. For me, it was acne for 20 years. It was mouth ulcers. It was, a, it was chest infections. I got run down. And then thank goodness my health practitioner put me on the capsules and it's been a nine year incredible health journey for me. And I feel passionate about sharing it with other people. And it got me involved in this business and helping other people. But we need variety. Whenever you eat, whenever you put food on a plate, think about feeding your body and fighting disease. And so we need a huge amount of variety. The people who study our gut, which is where all our cells stem from, they say that we need 30 varieties a week to have the healthiest sort of systems in our body. Now, with the capsules, we get 30 varieties a day. So it's an absolute no brainer. Um, so we'll be doing a webinar about those on Wednesday night if you'd like to learn more about them. But what you can see in front of you is all these different colours. I'll start with white. So I said maybe to get some pulses. Um, I've got cauliflower here as well. My pulses, I've done butter beans tonight. Um, white foods are brilliant for your immune system. The pulses are brilliant because they're going to give you some good protein. And they're, you know, some nice sort of complex carbs in there as well. But um, yeah, cauliflower, any sort of white foods that you can get in are amazing to build the immune system. So we need lots of whites, especially in winter. That's why people talk a lot about garlic um, for immune health. Um, yellows, I've got yellow sweet corn and I've got some yellow pepper. Yellow is very beautifying um, and does lots of lovely things for the body. The green foods, I've got some peas, I've got spinach, I've got some cucumber. Green foods help detoxify your body from these toxins that fruits and vegetables help mop up, um, but we need to get them out of the body. And lots and lots of green foods are really great for that. Um, your orange foods, I've only got one orange here tonight because I didn't have any orange pepper. Um, I've got some carrot. Orange foods are brilliant for your lungs, your eyes. Uh, the beta carotene is uh, vitamin A, it's very good for skin and um, anti-cancerous as well. 
we know that red is good for the heart, um, but also red foods, well, tomatoes especially, are full of lycopene, and lycopene helps protect you against skin cancer. This is why a tomato goes red on the vine, to protect it from sun damage. So uh, red foods are really important. I put in for extra protein, um, instead of quinoa or rice, I've done lentils. I overcook them a little bit, so I'm not going to show you. It looks a little bit like a, a little bit bowl of sick, really. Uh, <laughs> my lentils went a little mushy, um, but they're really good complex sort of proteins and things to keep you full for long. So this salad is going to be really filling. Um, and then last but not least, I keep it last because it's my favourite, are the purple foods. I've got some really thinly sliced red cabbage. I always think red cabbage looks like a brain and that's because purple foods are brilliant for your brain uh, you'll see in the newspaper they talk about blueberries for dementia and things like that purple foods are packed full of polyphenols and they wrap around your cells and prevent them from aging and damage so they wrap around your brain and help protect your brain you need a lot of purple food all my lights have gone out um, so we need to be getting a variety and that's the beauty with the capsules that we take because we've got 30 varieties we've got the whole color of the rainbow because if you're like me and you've got some fussy kids at home and things you cook what you know and you cook what you like so it's the peas the carrots the broccoli the sweet corn but we aren't grabbing pomegranates and bilberries and artichokes and all these different things and so this is where we lack the variety and of course what's in an orange carrot is very different to what's in an orange melon orange butternut squash, orange sweet potatoes. So we really need to be thinking about all the colors when we eat, but all of the variety as well. And of course it all starts getting a bit complicated when you've got a busy life, you've got kids, you've got a family, you've got partners, you've got work, you've got the house, the dogs, whatever. So this is why for us, the capitals aren't in place of good food because you know I pretty much eat this kind of stuff all the time, but it's to bridge that nutritional gap because there's all these nutrients in plant foods that we just can't access every single day, seven days a week. So yeah, as I said, capsules for us are king. We absolutely love them. And from that, and from that education and that self-awareness that I had, I thought, well, how else can we get more nutrients into our bodies? We've got the capsules, that's awesome, but we're all busy. How, and this is why salad in a jar works so well. If you were to do this on a Sunday with your kids, with your partner and line up five jars each, your kids can take them to school. Your partner can take them to work. You put them in the fridge. They last a week easily. And it just saves you so much time. So let's make a start. Um, give me one second. I'm just going to put on the rest of the lights because one of them has gone out on a timer. One second. Let there be light. And there was. Um, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off making the dressing. Um, you always want to make homemade dressing for your salads in the jars. Don't get shop bought. It goes all fizzy and weird in about a day or two. Not good, probably because of all the preservatives and things they put in it. Always want to make your own. So um, I'm going to just show you a really, really simple balsamic, and like sweet balsamic one. Um, there's lots of other options, and I'll tell you some of my faves, and I'm sure Jeanette can as well. So what we're going to do, essentially, is you've got your jars. And these are like 500 mil is perfect. It's really filling. When that gets round to the top, that is a huge plateful of food when it's tipped out. You need enough dressing to cover the base of all your jars. Okay, so I'm a bit of a bish bash bosh girl, so I never measure stuff out. People are like, how much? And I'm like, I don't know. I just whack it in. So you're going to basically do two thirds olive oil, one third balsamic. Okay, so I don't know. I'm actually doing it in a measuring jug tonight. I'm being very efficient. That is 100 mil. I think I need a bit more. Let's go with 150 mil of olive oil. Chloe, Chloe, yeah. I don't have olive oil. I've just run out. Can I use rapeseed or um, uh, sesame or not? Uh, I wouldn't use uh, rapeseed just because it's, it's more of a sort of, I don't know if it's the right word, but like a trans fatty one. Um, uh, sesame oil, there's, I've got walnut oil. That's a really nice one um what's the other one you've got yeah um sesame oil and yeah rapeseed um i've never, I've never made one with sesame that's more for stir fries isn't it it's got that really yeah. intense sort of nothing do you know what i'd say leave the dressing out and then just maybe when you get some more make up a little dressing in the fridge in a little jug oh, and yeah. whenever you okay. make your salads just pour it over the top yeah perfect better that than one than ruining five jars if you're not 
sure the flavour is unmuted. So. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the sesame, the sesame is going to really overpower the rest yeah. of the ingredients. So I'm, I'm doing, actually doing that. I'm not making a dressing, um, just because my husband's quite fussy and he's going to have some. So I'm just going to make them without the dressings oh, well, and then just do them on the day. Yeah, no, you can always do that. And then if you want to do a shop bought one, if you, if you, you know, then you can, um, then you can just pour it over at the time. You just don't want it sitting in a jar if it's shop bought just doesn't work well but always try and make your own if you can it can be super quick so i know i'm going to make too much dressing um i'm just as i said boshing it that is loads <laughs> um i'll be having dressing for the next three weeks um so like i said it'll be two thirds olive oil one third balsamic and then to give it that really nice sweetness and a nicer texture like a thicker texture wax some honey in and i would say just lots, <laughs> um, just a really good squeeze of honey. And just taste it, you know, just whisk it up, give it a taste. I've got a little hand holder here. Um, but in terms of other dressings you can do, one of my favorites is if you squeeze in a lime, you grate the zest of the lime, squeeze in the juice, put in, and then you put in that sweet chili sauce, you know, you get from Asian or from the supermarket for Asian food, sweet chili sauce, lime and olive oil amazing like a sweet chili um Jeanette what do you put in yours of oh, garlic as well crushed garlic in anything yum yeah um I do a peanut satay sauce so if you don't have any allergies I do one with peanut butter rice wine vinegar lime juice um some honey garlic ginger and a bit and a few chili flakes and just as you go along taste it and see what need what, what, what you want to add more of but that's a really nice one so I love peanut butter um and you only need a small amount of that once you've made it and a little bit of oil just to loosen it up I can put the recipe in the group afterwards but I love that one yeah and you just do just do a Google search. If you put in 10 easy salad dressings, you'll get an amazing Google search. Just a simple French vinaigrette, which is just literally some Dijon mustard. I actually prefer whole grain. I like the texture. Whole grain mustard, a bit of lemon juice, a little bit of white wine vinegar and olive oil. Um, I really also love, I get them from Sainsbury's. You can, I don't know if you can get it organic, but I get the, um, bear with, I get the garlic infused olive oil and I use that a lot if I'm frying tofu or if I'm cooking up like prawns or something like that garlic oil is so delicious and that in a dressing oh, is the best or stick it on top of if you're being really naughty stick it on top of a French camembert and dip your, dip your pitters in really good <laughs> um right so got your dressing and then you're literally going to get your jars and you just pour it in and cover the base like whoop, like that okay you don't want it drowning I would say in the bottom of mine what's that it's about a centimeter so you want it about a centimeter you're just going to do all your jars and you put your dressing at the bottom by Jove I think that is the perfect amount so it totaled 200 mil oh that's a bit much could have done six jars yeah might be able to salvage, make another jar, find a jar from somewhere. Um, right, so now you've got your, your dressing in the bottom. And then simply, the rule with salads in a jar is go with your wettest ingredients to your driest. You do not want your lovely crisp spinach leaves sitting in that oil because they'll just go all limp and horrible. So you go with the ones that won't lose their texture or shape, won't soak up all the dressing and go nasty and won't go all limp and horrible. So if you've got rice, quinoa, um, lentils, anything like that, I would stick that in the bottom. Um, and you just layer it up in colours. So I'm going to do my lentils at the bottom because they are so stodgy. And just literally a spoonful because you, you're going to do a dollop. You've probably got about 10 ingredients. So you're going to do a dollop of one spoon in every jar. Like a, like a conveyor belt system. 
I've tried doing it like one jar at a time, but it just takes ages, you know, like making up one jar all pretty and then moving on to the next. I think it's better to do one ingredient at a time across all the jars. And uh, as you can tell, I've been doing this a while. I've literally done my lentils the perfect amount. Wow, it's never happened before. Um, and then after that, in a perfect world, you'd probably put your pulses, but then you're gonna have like probably white on white, which isn't as pretty. So what you could probably put in is your red cabbage if you've got that. Or yeah, stick your pulses in, won't matter too much. I'm gonna do pulses. If you've got chickpeas, they're really nice. They won't go horrible or, or lose their texture at all. So just to recap, I've done dressing, then I've done lentils, and now I'm doing my butter beans. I love a butter bean. I love any beans. So good. I could probably just eat them with a spoon out of a can. I love them. Or like a, I get the organic ones from Sainsbury's in the um, cartons. Um, right, next, I am going to do my red cabbage because it won't go soggy and it won't soak up all the dressing or anything. So I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna use my hands. It's gonna go everywhere otherwise. So a handful of red cabbage. Beetroot will also be okay. That won't um, change in the dressing. Feel free to unmute yourself if, you're, if you've got any questions, if you're getting a bit lost or want me to recap anything. If you just want to say hello. I feel like I'm on a radio show, like I'm literally talking to myself. Maybe I should get a radio show. Right. Okay. So, mine look a bit like this at the moment. So what you'll see is the because you're putting stuff in, that the dressing might rise up a little bit in the glass. So it looks like you've got a lot of dressing in there, but you know it's just at the bottom pushing up. Um, and then I'm actually going to put, so if you've got green broccoli, dog's begging at the door. If you've got green broccoli or white cauliflower, I'd probably put that in next. If it's raw and uncooked, I would put that in next. I'm just going to let my dog in. One second. She will not be coming to my radio station. Thank you, Alba. Very annoying. I think she's worried she's going to miss out on some bits that fall on the floor or something. I seem to have the only dog in the world that loves every food except her dog food. She was eating cucumber at dinner. Okay, and then, right, so now you're safe to put whatever you want in because the dressing's really well covered. So I'm going to do red tomato because it's quite juicy and I don't want it mixing with all the salad leaves and the nice crispness of that and the cucumbers and stuff. So I'm gonna do, mine are a bit overripe, they're organic ones, really deep red, but they were just, I had about another two days of them I reckon, so. They're quite juicy. And you should start to see that your jars are looking very pretty. Chloe? Yes, darling? Did you do, did you do broccoli as well as cauliflower? No, I didn't. I didn't have any, but I love one or the other. Oh, you can do whatever. I mean, this is the nice thing of this. Whatever you've got in the fridge, you can do grated courgettes. You could do some sugar snaps and kind of chop them up. I mean, Anything that tastes good raw, and also you can do oven roasted pumpkin, butternut squash, sweet potato, any of those lovely flavours, they're yeah. really nice, cooked in a bit of olive oil. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, cooked mushrooms, I mean, whatever you want, these are your salad in the jars, so you can just make up whatever you want in there. You know, as long as I stay, as long as it's good, nutritious, whole foods, get it in there. And if you think, and I know Jeanette likes to put a bit of feta over the top, um, those pomegranate seeds you can get, just sprinkle pomegranate over the top, anything that takes your fancy. Dice, it's I, sorry? Sorry, um, is feta not dairy then? 
Well, it depends. You know, like we're on the cleanse at the moment, so we don't have dairy or gluten. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I mean, when you tip them all out, yeah. you can put poached salmon on the top or yeah, feta, poached egg, whatever. I find these are filling enough. I don't need anything else on top. But um, you know, the sweet potato goes really nice. If you do, yeah. I, I did. I've done cute sweet potato in the oven, and then if you put that on the bottom, the dressings it soaks up the dressing, which is lovely. So you can nice. do a mixture: diced sweet potato and butternut squash. Put that on the bottom, and that's really yummy. Yeah, totally agree with you on that one. Yeah, when I used to do the salad BC before COVID, we used to do them in, in my kitchen. I had uh, up to about 25 people at a time. It was lovely. And the premise of it was everybody brings one ingredient. So you, Catherine, would bring like two kilos of grated carrot. Somebody else would bring the spinach. Or, so you, all you had to do was bring one ingredient and get five meals. And it was lovely because we had raisins. We had diced apple. We had all these different things. And of course, as the food sort of ran out around the table, you had totally different jars. Um, and the other nice thing of salad in a jar is every mouthful is different. So one mouthful, it's sweet corn and broccoli. The next, it's pulses. with it. So it's just such a nice way to eat because you've got all that nice texture and flavour. And, you know, it's, it's just a great thing. So I've done the tomatoes and then I've put um, sweet corn on top of mine because I want the colour. So next I'm going to do some peas and then I'm going to do, I really like peas in a, I put peas in everything. I put them in my smoothies in the morning. Um, weird, but I do. So I'm going to put some peas and then I'm going to do some of the grated carrot as well. So I've got the kind of, what have I got? I've got white, purple, red, yellow, now green. And then it's the orange. You could also make like seasonal jars once you've got the hang of it using produce that's in season. Um, so once you've kind of got the basics this evening, when we come into the summer, you can try more, yeah, lighter salads and more leaves and edible flowers, those sorts of things. Yes, you can tell Jeanette's a bit more adventurous on the cooking front with her edible flowers. I don't think I've ever had an edible flower in my house, but I'm aware of anyway. You can do like pea shoots, microgreens, cress. Oh, yes. There's so much you could do. Yeah. And of course, then you can also put herbs on the top. You can do coriander. I love coriander. Chili flakes, as Jeanette said, you could sprinkle them on. I mean, you could also do them when you sit down to eat, but... Uh, Coriander will be absolutely fine as long as it's sitting on the top away from all the wet stuff. Um, yeah, what are some others? The only stuff that I stay clear of is things that go mushy. Avocado, which I love, I wouldn't put in my salad in a jar. It'll just go really brown. A couple of little tips or hacks for you though that I've learned along the way. If you get an avocado and you just want half, say for lunch, with the other half, get a pint glass, fill it with cold water, Put the avocado in it, just stick it in the fridge. It stays really green, won't go brown and yucky. So the next day you'll have a bright green avocado and it just sits in water. That's a really good one. And the reason why salad in jars will last for a week, looking like this, staying crisp, staying really fresh, is because of the glass. Really preservative with the airtight lid on. It just, it keeps its freshness and its crispness and everything. The same with all your berries. You know, if you go and get go to the supermarket, get some organic berries, maybe like strawberries and things, bring them home, you wash them, and the next day it looks like you drove over them, like they're just a mushy heap in the thing. As soon as you get them home, wash them, stick them in a glass or towel dry them, like I put them in a tea towel and get the water off, and then just put them in a glass jar, and they just last really, really well. I, so, I actually took that tip, Chloe, from you for my strawberries and grapes, and it is brilliant. Oh, is it working okay? Best thing, honestly, so simple. Oh, I'm so, so They literally, grapes in this house go mushy in like two or three days if you leave them in a little plastic punnet. But yeah. I got a big glass jar, probably a, probably a thousand mil, I reckon. So what, a litre? And just literally fill it up with grapes and they last a good week. They're absolutely brilliant. Oh. Even my husband, who likes his grapes really crunchy, Said these grapes are brilliant. He said, I like your glass jar, so thank you for the tip. Oh, my pleasure, hon. My pleasure. Um, yeah, same with us. 
Oh, Sorry. I can say same with us with the strawberries. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it works. And it was somebody actually in our customer group, Hannah, who posted it saying it was off an article and she said, look at this. And everyone was like, what? And um, yeah, question. mind flown. Can I ask a question? Of course, my lovely. Um, I'm Claire on the other side of the Atlantic. I'm in California, actually. Oh, amazing. Um, Thank you so much for hopping on. So I have a question because I have red onion. So would I put the red onion on the top or where would I put the red onion? Um, I think if it's really finely sliced, you'd probably want it in amongst your salad leaves, wouldn't you? But red onion, you want it to keep crisp. So yeah, any, as long, I wouldn't have it in the dressing. So anywhere okay. in between. Um, okay. But yeah, so it's just a case of, you know, what, what do you want it to keep its shape and what's okay soaking up a load of olive oil and dressing, you know? So you know that a hard broccoli and cauliflower is going to be okay, pulses, lentils, because they're already quite mushy and wet anyway. Um, whereas your salad leaves and the things that are really crisp and things, no. So now I've just been going through it. So I, so mine are pretty much nearly done now. So I have got my lentils my pulses obviously the dressing at the bottom my purple cabbage then i've got the wet tomatoes then sweet corn and peas grated carrot then i did cucumber on top now i'm doing some yellow pepper i've given up with the spoon i'm literally lobbing it in with my paws and because i never judge it right i'm also pushing it down into the jar the idea is to try and get as much air out and get as much food in so um yeah mine are sort of packed i mean i really do you'll see it. just pack it right in because now i've got room for my salad leaves to go in the top so it's really funny at the salad in a jar if one starts off very demure and by the end they're like trying to get their salad leaves in um and then of course sprinkle your nuts and seeds on top if you want um yeah so I've managed to get all mine in and then it's literally I've just washed my spinach leaves and then again just literally probably a handful or whatever now you can fit in your jar fill those green leaves up to the top because obviously the green leaves are what are going to fall at the bottom of your salad when you tip it out so you've got a nice bed of green leaves for your salad to sit on so you can do spinach rocket some nice little bits of kale let, lettuce yeah it would have to be a sort of quite a good robust lettuce i would say if you, especially if you like me i'm going to be ramming it in there i love rocket peppery rocket um yeah anything really a whole mixture of all of it um i've got some um just to share i've got some um um sorrel growing in the tower garden oh joe which has got the sorrel. most beautiful lemony flavor just to add that really little, little, little sort of extra piquancy at the oh. other end of it, so. Yeah, well, I read about the sorrel, never eaten it in my life, grew it on my tower. So for anyone that doesn't know what the tower is, um, I'll show you actually, I've just planted mine up since Christmas. This is an aeroponic growing system. I'm gonna put the lights on, get ready to be blinded, Chloe. Oh. Woo! So um, let me flip the camera, you can see my tower. So this is it. So um, the water's at the bottom and then we've got these 20 pods. So all the water pumps to the top and just cascades over the plants. So all year round, Jo's growing all her greens and has her salad every day. Um, I've just planted mine up, literally New Year's Day. So I've got some basil growing. I've got my parsley. This lettuce is going crazy. This is a Grenoble red. Um, this is my sorrel, Joe, because my sorrel grew yeah. all year. It was the boys' favourite. They used to just walk past every day and pick a bunch. Yeah, that's and it is. It's like a it's like a lemon lettuce. It's absolutely delicious. And in your smoothies, Joe, if you don't put them in yet, oh my god, amazing! Yeah, fantastic. Um, got my green kale growing and rocket. These are my Oriental greens. Chard I love is it. A, another really good one. Um, I've got rainbow yes. chard, so it's got orange stems, red stems, yellow stems, and the leaves are just brilliant in salad. And I've been eating a lot of those just raw on. on oh, my I plate. just love it. 
Yeah, I love it. This is my little chili plant. It's growing really quickly. So I'm going to have the big fat red chilies hopefully this time. And then these are just empty ones. I'm waiting for a few more to grow in the airing cupboard, little seedlings to pop through. So oh, you can see how messy my kitchen is now. Um, out of interest, yeah. Zoe, how long does it take to get like a proper full harvest out of those? How long does it oh. take to grow? Well, I planted them on New Year's Day and I'd say I've got my two lettuce. I reckon four weeks before yeah. you can really start eating your lettuce. But what I found was I was nervous to pick the first lettuce leaves because I was like, oh, what if I kill it? You know, what if there's nothing? The more you pick it, the more it seems to then just go mad. But my basil, my parsley, my sorrel that I planted last December, mm. after 12 months, it just got so big I had to take it out. My kale, they all lasted 12 months. And then I just wow. took them out for Christmas and replanted. So my basil was like this big. Wow. And it lasted 12 months. And do months. you do it so that, do you do like, if you've got like, uh, do you time it? So you plant, let's say you planted two kale on the 1st of January and then you did another two on like the 1st of Feb. So you had like a bit of a rotation system or not? I'd say my kale, I would spread it five months apart because right, my okay. kale just went and went and went. The stalks okay. ended up being like tree trunks. They were so thick and it's just leaf after leaf and we couldn't get through it. As a family yeah. of four, you know, I was put, packing it into our smoothies every day. We were having it for salads sort of four days a week, four days a week. And the salads was just going so mad. We ended up losing some of it because I just couldn't keep up with it. So what I was doing was freezing bags of it. So I've still got bags of kale and basil in the freezer, which I love. And then what I would say is the lettuces. So I'd maybe get, I think I've got sticks growing and I've got three empty. So I think as the sort of four of them come to the end, when they start going a bit leggy, I would yeah. have the other ones kind of getting ready to go. So yeah. you can pull them out and Bad. yeah. I'm going to dash because I've got another Zoom. I've, I've actually made stir fry pots rather than salad pots because I prefer hot <gasps> food to salad. Great idea. I've no, done great stir idea. fry pots instead. Brilliant idea. Love so I've that. Got, um, I've got nuts for the protein. I've got kale, onion, three different types of peppers, courgette, and then some plain rice and some peas, and then some chilli and feta cheese on top. Fabulous. So is any of that cooked? So the rice is cooked. The rice is cooked. Everything else is raw. So I just chuck it so in. Whack it in 10 minutes. Whack it in it 10 minutes, fry it up and off it goes. Yeah. Right. Because that's, that's what, what I tend to eat more of. Next. Yeah, that's what we'll do for the next event. We'll do stir right. fries in the jar. I love Ooh. that. There. Thank you. So that's Brian. what I've done. I'm going to dash. I'll um, speak to you guys later. Thank you, rock right. star. Take care, care, my love. Bye, darling. Thank you. So that's pretty much it, guys. We are done. I'm aware of the time. Um, we went a bit off kilter, but I had to show you my tower. Thank you, Joe, for mentioning that. I mean, you're a bit of a seasoned pro with the old tower now. I mean, you've just been growing everything on yours. Well, I've got baby tomatoes at the moment that have grown all year round. Um, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm quite attached to things though. So I keep thinking I've got to start again, but I don't want to get rid of the, some of the things that's just growing so brilliantly. I know. Um, and you do get great. I mean, with the flowers, because they're indoors with the tomatoes, you have to pollinate them yourself, don't you? Well, I, haven't do you, I guess you don't now. Hmm. I haven't been having to do that with mine. They've wow. just been, yeah. That's amazing. But you get yeah. so attached to the living things. So you don't want to, like, thanks so much. We're going to rip you out. I mean, I was yeah. the same. I didn't want to get rid of my parsley and basil. They've been with me for a year. It's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I know but, what you mean. But it's great, yeah. amazing. It's really changed our lives and our eating habits. Oh, well, fabulous. That is amazing to hear. Um, yeah, well, let's, um, I'm going to go on to the gallery view. I'm going to see if I can get a photo of all of us holding up our jars. I don't have to go to the gallery now. I'm on this. Gonna work. Oh, no, I don't know how to do it. Jeanette, would you go to gallery and take a screenshot? Can you do that, darling? I want to get a photo of us all holding up our beautiful, colourful jars. Um, Gallery view, oh well. Um, yeah, but if we can, yeah, grab a picky of our jars, pull them up, and um, hopefully you've all found that. Let's do a one, two, three, sorry, Jeanette. One, two, three, and smile. I can't see anybody, so I'm just talking to myself. Um, it might just be me holding up my jar. Um, but hopefully you've all found that useful. I'm really excited. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. And they, like I said, they will be absolutely fine by the weekend in your fridge. 
And all you do is tip them up on a plate. You've got an upside down salad, all your dressing at the top, your leaves at the bottom. And then if you want, you can put whatever you want with it. I love a dollop of hummus. It's my favorite with some chili flakes, but just enjoy. And um, yeah, does anyone have any last minute questions at all? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask. And thank you so much for coming tonight, everybody. It's really been really lovely to have you all on. Jeanette, thank you so much for your um, advice and tips as well. And um, enjoy them. Tango. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Chloe. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you so much, Bye. Chloe. Bye. Thank you. Bye. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.